going to continue right away with the speech of the opinion by the circle of Chile. Welcome, Mr. Pagas. Thank you very much. Dear participants of the Copenhagen Democracy Summit, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to have this opportunity to share with you the challenges that Armenian democracy is facing. The good news is that democracy has indeed become a reality in Armenia. But what has changed for citizens of Armenia by real democracy? Before the 2018 Railway Revolution, in our country, massive electoral frauds were the usual companions of elections. There was no trust among the citizens that there is a real chance for them to elect and form the parliament and government. Now the situation is totally different. Citizens know that they are powerful enough to decide. The two general elections that were held in Armenia after the Zabad Revolution have been acknowledged as democratic, free, and competitive, both by the Armenian society and the international community. Armenia made huge progress in strengthening the democratic institutions, an achievement which is very well reflected in various reputable democracy indexes. Now we are the fourth third in the Reporters Without Borders Freedom of Speech in Index, compared to 79th place in 2017. Categorized as having partially free internet in 2017 by Freedom House, now we enjoy the status of country with free internet. In the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index, Armenia is now in the 62nd place instead of 107 in 2017. In the Economist Intelligence Unit's Democracy Index, now we are 84 compared to 111 in 2017. In order to assess this progress, it is essential to note that Alongside democratic reforms, Armenia has been contending with external security challenges. 44 days war in Nagorno Karabakh, invasion of Azerbaijani troops into sovereign territories of Armenia in 2021 in 2022, and occupation of more than 200 square kilometers of Armenian sovereign territories with the indifference and inaction of Collective Security Treaty Organization, the forced displacement of more than 100,000 Armenians from Nagorno Karabakh contacted doubts among Armenian citizens whether democracy is the right choice or maybe democracy means less security. So, democracy needs to prove its efficiency while dealing with security, economic, and humanitarian challenges. And we need to help to see global democracy standing by us in addressing all those challenges. We are pleased with the deployment of EU monitoring mission alongside the Armenian Azerbaijani border. And we welcome the EU's decision to expand its capacity. On the other hand, we hope for inclusion of Armenia into the European Peace Facility. And this is, in this regard, we rely on the support of EU member countries. A new set of commitments aimed at strengthening Armenia's economic resilience, state institutions, and addressing humanitarian needs of refugees from Nagorno Karabakh has been taken on by the European Union and the United States during the high level meeting of President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. Secretary of State of USA, Eddie Blinken, and myself, which took place on April 5 in Brussels. The rapid and effective implementation of those commitments is of utmost importance. Ladies and gentlemen, despite all the challenges, 
we believe that the real and most, most aspiring companion for democracy is lasting and sustainable peace. And my government took the share of its responsibility for this. Recently, we reached to an agreement with Azerbaijan to start the delimitation of our interstate borders on the basis of Almata Declaration of 1991. That means that during the delimitation, we should simply reproduce the administrative borders between Soviet Armenia and Soviet Azerbaijan, which become state borders according to Almata Declaration. The start of border delimitation is that implementation of agreement reached during the quadrilateral meeting of October 6 of 2022 between the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, President of the European Council, Charles Michel, President Khalil of Azerbaijan, and me. It took place in Prague. Now it is time to incorporate and reflect those agreements in the peace treaty and have it signed. Another key point for our regional stability is the process of peace project initiated by my government. This project implies that Armenia and Azerbaijan restore and open transport and other communications in accordance with the sovereignty and jurisdiction of the countries through which they pass and comply with the principles of equality and reciprocity. These elements of the concept were agreed upon during the meeting of July 15 on 2023 between the President of Azerbaijan and myself, facilitated by the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, and are reflected in the public statement made by President Michel as a result of the meeting. We are ready to move toward the implementation of what has been agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, before answering your questions, I would like to stress that democracy is a strategy for community. In democracy, we believe. In democracy, we live. Thank you very much.